My name's Olivia, also known as Penelope Ford. And I'm Kip, also known as Simon, but we'll stick with Kip. <laughs> this is our third attempt now at filming this. We're hoping that there'll be less tears and less rambling. What we're going to talk about happened a little over a year ago now. And it still weighs pretty heavy on our hearts. But we want to be 100% transparent with you guys before we start this channel back up. Last year, we found out that we were expecting. And we were overwhelmed with the news because we both always wanted to have children. But nervous because it wasn't planned. Ultimately, with our jobs being professional wrestlers, we were even more nervous because that meant that we had to tell work, we had to tell our boss as soon as possible. When we told our boss, Tony Khan, that we were expecting, he had this stack of papers in his hands, and as soon as he heard the news, he just threw them and they went all over the room. And he just like gave us the biggest hug. If you've ever seen on the stage when a new person has debuted in AEW and smashed it out of the park and Tony gives them that like jumping hug, that's the hug that we got. And as soon as that happened, all of the nerves and the fears that we had completely turned into just pure excitement and we were excited for what was to come. We began making doctor appointments. Uh, thinking about how we would decorate the nursery, coming up with name ideas. We could not wait for our first ultrasound appointment, which was going to be at 11 weeks. Yep. And then something strange started happening. Yeah, my body physically looked like I was in my second trimester at nine weeks. Yeah, I, I instantly thought that we were having twins because it was that large at such a short time. So fast forward and it's a typical Tuesday for us. We're about to go to the airport for AEW. I'm about... 10 weeks and in less than a week i'll have our first ultrasound appointment and we pack the car the suitcases are there and we're ready to go as soon as i get into the car i feel like i wet myself and i quickly check there's blood like an abnormal amount of blood all i can see is the panic in her face i'm just saying no 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 and I book it to the bathroom. Instant reaction, I have no idea what's going on. So I call work and I let them know, hey, we've got a family emergency. There's no way we're making our flight. I drive us straight to the hospital because we don't know what's going on. This is a shock. And we like are in that waiting room for what felt like an eternity. Yeah, it was like 45 minutes. It was the longest 45 minutes of my life, I think. As soon as they took us back, they checked my blood levels and my hormone levels. Everything looked great, yeah. but they had to do an ultrasound to make sure that the baby was okay. So when they took me back to do the ultrasound, they found two abnormal readings. The first thing they did was question how far along we actually were. They were measuring the baby at 6.3 weeks old. And they couldn't detect the heartbeat. Which the doctor said it could be because the baby's a newer baby. As if we'd had the wrong date of conception. And not hearing a heartbeat is normal prior to seven weeks. Second finding was that the baby wasn't actually accompanied by a twin. But a fibroid. The size of a cantaloupe. Mm, which fibroids are common. Women can have multiple but in my case mine just happened to be very large they like to feed off of the hormones of pregnancy which allows them to grow and that's exactly what happened to me she sent us home told us to try and stay positive which obviously was really hard for us at this point but we tried our best just to wait until our appointment which was on the following monday and then we could get everything checked again and obviously if there's any issues to call them up or come back in the rest of that week was really hard. It's hard to stay optimistic and positive. That appointment just couldn't come sooner. Yeah. But unfortunately, the baby didn't make it to that Monday appointment. That Saturday, I started to have cramps. Gradually got worse and worse until eventually I started to bleed again. Obviously, I drove us straight to the hospital. Uh, we waited even longer this time. It was like an hour or so 
and the pain was unbearable and I was just bawling my eyes out. They finally took us back. We met with the same doctor. My hormone levels had dropped drastically, which confirmed uh, a miscarriage. Unfortunately, they still have to do an ultrasound. And I just remember staring up at the ceiling and thinking like, this is my fault. You'd already had medication. They then sent you home with even more medication papers on what to expect, instructions for if we required emergency care. The whole thing felt like it required emergency care because the pain was like around a 10. I've never seen you in that much pain before. And then we just had to wait until the baby would possibly pass. Which is details I don't, I don't think either of us really want to discuss. Um, that is the hardest part of the whole story to tell yeah um that is very personal and it just felt very wrong yeah yeah i still kept that first appointment like she advised i had to have an ultrasound to make sure that the baby had fully passed and all the tissue and whatnot determine if i would need a DNC, which the baby completely passed through and I did not require one, but the fibroid kept being read on the ultrasound as a 40 week old baby's head, which is full term. I was then referred to a specialist in removing fibroids, especially large ones. I had to then have an MRI. A few weeks later, that was to see if the fibroid had gotten smaller, which it didn't. And then I underwent surgery to remove it. The main reason we wanted to get our story out and we felt it was important was because people just don't talk about miscarriages. No, and like one in four people will have one and it's not your fault. It not being your fault, that's something that has taken you a long time to get past. And for me, seeing you blame yourself for something that is not your fault is a hard process to go through. We wanted to get this video out for our healing process and know that it's okay to talk about this kind of thing. Speculation of the reason why you've been away is because of injury. She's recovering from this surgery, so she's ready to come back at 100% what helped me and I know helped you. Without this baby, we wouldn't have known that the fibroid would have this effect, which would have caused complications. Or being able to go full term. And now you've had the surgery to remove it. So when we next get pregnant, the baby has sacrificed itself for its brother or sister to come. In a weird way, beautiful. <laughs> it shed light on something that was already there before I got pregnant. For us, we didn't want to make people aware of this for a multitude of reasons. The sympathy that people would give while we were trying to deal with this. I didn't want people to feel bad for me. Exactly. We wanted to make sure that we could process, analyze, grieve, start to move forward before we made people aware of this. So now we can sit here and it's not something that is just gonna go away, but we're definitely in a point of positivity when looking forward to the future. We just wanna thank you for listening and letting us tell you about our experience. It is part of our healing process. Obviously our hearts go out to anyone that is going through this, has experienced it before. Or know anyone that is going through one and hope that our story will help in any way. And we just want to thank you so much for listening.